Hello, Rudy here, and welcome to Oxygen Not Included. I'm just mining some Abyssalite right now because we're going to need some extra Abyssalite for our next construction project, which is going to be an oil boiler. A boiler powered by the very fiery fury of magma at 1500 degrees Celsius. It's going to be very, very hot. So the oil boiler is a very simple concept, though it does require a bit of engineering to get it working the way we like it. So we're going to build an obsidian tile right here in contact with the magma. Right here. We'll dig that out. So the idea is the magma will heat up this obsidian tile. Since the obsidian is, uh, well, since it's made out of obsidian, it's not going to melt. I think this has like a 3000 degree melting temperature, 2700 degree melting temperature. So yeah, the obsidian tile will be just fine. Don't you worry about the obsidian tile. And then uh, we're going to use uh, plumbing pipes to uh, drip crude oil on the obsidian tile it's going to be like a hot plate essentially and we'll cook that oil into petroleum and then of course natural gas so yeah we need to build a structure around here to sort of manage the flow and cooling of that natural gas and ultimately we'll have a uh, a gas pump to pump that gas to wherever we want it probably a natural gas a generator i presume and of course Lindsay is already here so anyway Let's get this going. I'm gonna build some metal tiles over here to sort of act as a radiator to help uh, get rid of some of the heat. We'll need to dig out. Hopefully no one falls in. They should really put up some caution tape. I guess we can just dig out probably all of this. I'm not sure exactly how much room we're going to need. So one, two, three, and uh, yeah, let's start start with all that. So I'm gonna, I'm not gonna fully pen in the entire structure yet because I want the duplicates to be able to get here and walk around. So yeah, using all that abyss light we just mined. Three, let's uh, build a sort of a wall here. And I guess I'm going to put them all three tiles apart each. Oops, bit of a mistake there. So what's going to happen is our natural gas will come up here, come down there, come down here, come down here, and all throughout the entire process it'll get cooled down. Now what is going to cool down our natural gas? Well, the natural gas is going to get cooled down by the very oil that we're pumping in. So let's see, we'll need a liquid vent. Let's make that out of gold amalgam. We'll put that right above the the hot plate. And let's, let's I, I think we'll have our best bet with some obsidian pipes to prevent uh, melting. And we're just going to go all the way around like this, like a radiator. Okay, and this will be our oil input. I guess uh, let's, I'll send it all the way here. I'm actually going to deconstruct this pump because I don't plan on using it anymore. All right, what else do we need to pencil in here? Uh, okay, yeah, let's, yeah, we'll put these ladders up here so the duplicates can actually get to the dizzying heights they need to do the construction. Let's see, I'm going to throw some temp shift plates down here sort of act as a radiator because this is this, especially this area here is going to get extremely hot the natural gas is probably going to be close to a thousand degrees celsius i'm not sure the best strategy for cooling it uh i kind of want to have the option of maybe just dumping a bunch of polluted water down here to help cool it off a bit uh yeah oh and i guess uh, the final thing we need to put in here is how could we forget we need to put a wall here i guess it doesn't need to be made out of abyssalite it'll just come down like so and uh yeah we'll have a door a mechanized airlock of course ventilation like i said we're gonna have ventilation here we'll make this pump out of gold amalgam to help prevent overheating gas pipe out of abyss light of course because we're gonna be pumping out hot natural gas natural gas output pipe atmo sensor and how about a buffer gate Iron conductive wire. Okay, that's everything we need. The structure actually has very low power requirements, which is cool. And uh, I don't think we need to worry about any of this stuff overheating because it's made out of good metals. Some of these pipes may sustain damage if, you know, this design isn't good. But I guess we'll see. We'll need to just build it and let it run for a while.
All right, the principal construction is basically complete. Just need to make a few more pipe segments. So all that took about three cycles, of course. It's a pretty long commute to the job site. I mean, my duplicates need to come all the way down here. I've actually made more exosuit docks. We used to have only six, but I made expansion, so now we have nine, and that probably helped a bit. So I'm going to just spend some time sweeping and mopping everything up and just cleaning it up so it looks nice. And that's probably going to take quite a few more cycles, but yeah, it took about three cycles to build this whole thing. And then once it's all cleaned up, I'll, uh, we'll, we'll turn this sucker on. Oh yeah, also I put an abyssalite tile here to sort of cap off the heat to prevent things from heating up. And we'll just destroy that abyssalite tile once we're ready. Our floor is sweeped. We run a real tight ship here. The only thing we need to do, I guess, is deconstruct this tile there. A duplicate will be along shortly, and I guess we'll just sort of finish off things over here. Make some of these tiles. Alright, I'm just waiting for a duplicate to come along and build this one last tile. I don't know what is keeping them, and then we just need to shut the door, and we'll be good to go. Okay, so we can activate this system. Uh, we need our oil input. The system is useless without oil. So where's our liquid pipe? Here it is, so I've disconnected it from the main pipeline, but we're going to reconnect it now. I guess let's use Abyssalite, no reason not to. We're going to need to make a, a liquid valve here so we can control the flow of oil. We don't want to send in, you know, 10 kilograms per second. We want to bring it down to like maybe 60 grams per second or 120 grams per second. Okay, we'll hook that up there. We're probably going to set it to like, uh, I don't know, 60 grams per second because uh, a natural gas generator consumes 60 grams per second of natural gas. We can deconstruct these. All right, so once the, I guess once the liquid valve is complete, we can uh, set it to like 60 grams. All right, let's set this to 60 grams per second to start off with. Maybe I'll put it at like 240 eventually. Now they just need to make those couple last bits of uh, liquid pipe. Okay, we are in business. There we go, we have one large packet of, I don't know, 10 kilograms. It can't be helped. And then we have 60 grams of crude oil. So now one thing I did not do is I did not turn this into a vacuum chamber. You know what? I think that's probably fine though. I mean, it's gonna take quite a while for all the natural gas to work its way throughout this system. So we have, we'll probably fire up the ventilation pump and get all of this uh, polluted oxygen and other gases out of here. Well, let's watch the oil do its thing. Okay, it's the moment of truth. 10 kilograms of oil hits the hot plate, and there you go. It's turning into petroleum, and it turned into natural gas. That is perfect. Now we're getting 60 grams per second. So, I mean, just to review to those of you who skipped chemistry class, crude oil vaporizes at 399 degrees. It becomes petroleum. Let's see if we can find some petroleum. Aha! And then petroleum will vaporize at 538 degrees Celsius, giving us precious natural gas. Unbreathable, but most burnable. And so yeah, this natural gas is like 800 degrees Celsius. Look at that heat. That is hot. And so the hot natural gas will work its way through this system. It'll maybe hopefully be a bit cooled down by our crude oil, which as you can see is only 65 degrees Celsius. Okay, well we just need to let that go for a while. Now we will hook up these gas pipes to the uh, natural gas generators. We'll make these pipes out of abyssalite because, you know, I'm going to be pumping hot natural gas. So I think for now I will just... I will just hook it up to this pipeline here, so it's going to go through this uh, gas filter, which will filter out all the natural gas and send it up to our natural gas generator here. So we have a lot of options here. Like, we can take this uh, liquid filter and increase, to say, 240 grams per second to increase our natural gas production, which will allow us to feed even more generators. Eventually, though, this magma pool will cool down and solidify to igneous rock, but uh, 
I don't know all the math I read about it, and this pool will probably last us for several hundreds of cycles, more than we need. So let's just try and pump out as much stuff as we can. Help the natural gas move along the course. One thing I've noticed is there seems to be a pocket of polluted oxygen up here that's sort of jamming up the works. So what I'll do is I'm just going to put in two or one or two airflow tiles temporarily just to maybe let things get pushed out the top here. And then uh, I'll deconstruct them and replace them with abyssalite. Alright, I can't quite tell if that seems to be working. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> so now we're getting a, a massive cloud of extremely hot natural gas escaping from our industrial machinery. Yeah, that is not an EPA violation, I don't think. Nothing wrong with that. That's not against any sort of regulations. I mean, hey, this is our asteroid. We make the regulations. Okay, let's replace those airflow tiles. I think we've sufficiently... Yeah, look at that. Now the gas is flowing. Let the gas flow. Okay, well, if you ever build one of these, just keep an eye out for that. If uh, polluted oxygen gums up your works, I'm sure eventually the natural gas would have forced its way through, but now things seem to be moving along much more quickly. All right, we've reached a milestone. We are pumping out pure natural gas now. Contents of the pipe is uh, 70, uh, 45 grams of natural gas at 70 degrees Celsius. So yeah, horribly inefficient pumping out the gas this way, but let's just appreciate what we've accomplished so far. And yeah, we're feeding that one generator. I've actually built another pipe here. So now we're feeding both generators with this natural gas device that we've built. All right, so that's pretty good. So the 60 grams per second would be enough to fulfill, to fill this one generator. But you know, we're making more than 60 grams overall because we have our oil refinery and also our oil well. So I decided to hook up both pipes there. But enough about that, just a stupid detail. We're probably going to build more natural gas generators pretty soon. Let's do an uh, analysis of the temperature situation here. As you can see, it is red hot. Our liquid vent here is 231 degrees Celsius. I'm not sure if it's going to keep on heating up or not, but hey, melting points 1000 degrees Celsius. Liquid pipes are made out of obsidian. They melt at 2700 degrees Celsius, and they are currently at 214. If we look at our plumbing overlay, we have crude oil coming in at 70 degrees celsius by the time it reaches the end of the loop it's 200 degrees celsius so then by the time it gets deposited on the hot plate it's already heated up 100 degrees so it's really going to help preserve the energy in this magma because we're just essentially sucking the heat energy out of the natural gas like right here the natural gas is 260 degrees celsius by the time it works its way through the system it's down to 70 five degrees celsius wow that is perfect that is a perfect temperature for natural gas i think i think that's the temperature it comes out at of uh natural gas geysers oh there's some 80 90 degree so if the temperature ever does become an issue we can always maybe take some polluted water from up here and just sort of dump it down here into this cooling pit i suppose like the uh temp shift plate here is what 250 degrees celsius 286 yeah it's getting even hotter but it'd be a great way to boil some polluted water get some steam get some clean water and uh let this system cool down a bit but we'll see we'll need to let it run for a while see what happens with these pipes see if there's any overheating damage our liquid vent is at 275 degrees celsius now so since we are pumping out pure natural gas at this point it's time to take our atmos sensor and set it to above 1,000 grams. This way, whenever the pump activates, there'll be enough gas in the area for it to suck in full 500 gram packets of gas, and uh, our pump will go through phases of activation and deactivation, but on average, it'll be sending up enough gas to power to uh, supply one entire generator. I've been observing this boiler for a couple of cycles now, or, well, several cycles, and the temperature just seems to keep on rising and rising. Our liquid vent is at 321 degrees Celsius now. As the oil makes its way through the system, you know, it's coming in at 70 degrees Celsius, and by the time it gets up here, it's already at 318 degrees Celsius. So I'm hoping this is going to reach some sort of equilibrium point soon, where maybe it'll just hover around 330 or 340 degrees Celsius, I hope. But 
If not, we'll need to add in some kind of cooling system here to help uh, cool this all down so this area doesn't get quite so hot. But that is for another time. That's all I have for today. Hit that thumbs up if you liked the video. Leave a comment. I really like hearing from you guys. And I hope to see you next time for more Oxygen Not Included.